The next way to work with ZBrush is to load a tool. A tool is a ZBrush mesh. And to do that, we're going to go to load tool. And I'm going to open a mesh that I've been working with. Now, again, you have to click and drag the mesh. Don't worry about its position. If you want it to be aligned on an axis, just hold the shift key like so. But notice that we cannot sculpt. We don't see the gutter. Remember the white frame that tells you that you're in a 3D model. And that is because we are in what's called 2.5D. So if I keep on clicking, all I'm going to do is get the mesh. Because this is the 2.5D version of the program. So what I'm going to do is get out of my piglet nightmare. And I'm going to clear my canvas by going to Control N, Apple Command N on a Mac. And again, you click and drag the object. Immediately you hit edit, which is the shortcut letter T, and now we are in 3D mode. So this was a base mesh of a piglet, which I started sculpting. And this is the same thing as sculpting on a sphere, a cube, any primitive that we have converted into a poly mesh. As you can see, all my sculpting tools are available. And I'm going to talk about what subdivisions are in ZBrush. Unlike programs like Maya, Lightwave, 3D Studio Max, Softimage, and so on, which are considered box modeling 3D programs, ZBrush and programs like Modbox and 3D Code are what we call subdivisional sculpting programs. And that is because we have the ability to increase and decrease the resolution of our mesh. If I go to Subtools, close it down, open my geometry, you will notice that this mesh right here has five subdivisions. If I bring it down to the lowest subdivision, this is what the piglet looks like at its lowest subdivision. Now, I'm going to convert this Cube 3D into, first of all, a poly mesh so we can sculpt it. As you can see, none of my sculpting tools are showing. And we do this again by going to make poly mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a subdivisional hierarchy. We're going to go to divide. And let me bring up my poly frame so you can see what the mesh looks like. And when I click on divide, which is control D, you will notice that our mesh now has two subdivisions. Subdivision 1 and Subdivision 2. As I keep going, what we're doing is we are subdividing our mesh over and over and over. So we're adding more polygons. And to showcase this, I'm going to go to my lowest subdivision. And if you hover the mouse over this large icon, it's going to tell you that this cube at its current level, which is subdivision 1, has 512 polygons. Now, if I go up to subdivision level 4, in this case, and I hover over the icon, it's going to tell me that this polygon now has 31,744 polygons polygons. The more divisions that you add, what you're doing is you're quadrupling the amount of polygons. So if you take one single polygon face, like this one right here, when you subdivide it, what you're doing is you're splitting it in half in both directions. So you're going from one polygon face to four. So you're quadrupling the amount of polygons. And as you can see, it's very easy to go from 512 polygons and in five subdivisions end up with 126,976 polygons. Now, why do we want to subdivide? Well, that is because if we go to subdivision one, and let me get rid of my polyframe, and I try to sculpt with my clay tubes, you will notice that the resolution is very low. We cannot get any detail. But if we go to subdivision 5 in this case, and we start sculpting, right, you're going to get better results. So I'm going to subdivide this further to subdivision level 7. And now notice that our count is 2,031,616 polygons. 
but as you can see our surface has enough polygons also known as resolution so that we can sculpt all sorts of details I'm going to just add some texture right here so you can see what it looks like let me go to another side of this object and I'm using the standard brush with the drag rectangle and a brush alpha just to create some detail and I'm gonna go to my subdivision level one and use the same tool and notice that we cannot see what we're sculpting because there is not enough resolution the reason why we use this subdivisional system is because it is very easy in ZBrush to use tools like the move brush to make huge changes on our low subdivision model and then go up to a higher subdivision like level 7 and then we can sculpt our details so for example when I work on this piglet right here if I hit F to frame the piglet notice that I can make huge changes with my move tool I'm gonna to make sure that I have mirror yes I do and I'm going to for example move his snout forward push the eyes back to the eyeballs and now when I go to subdivision level 5 in this case my detail remains the same so I'm going to undo so you can see what I did and let me go back to subdivision and this is how we work with subdivisions and sculpting in ZBrush